No, it wasn't good, mate. It wasn't good at all. And the cops were after him. I wanted to get rid of him. I'm thinking, Jesus. You're under arrest. Hello, respected broadcaster Andrew Mulligan here, and also tortured friend of one Bryce Casey. It marks 10 years since this bald-headed belligerent <laughs> dressed as a pilot and tried to blag his way into a restricted area of an airport for a wannabe and TV episode. Let's hear what really happened on that day from the show's director, Andy. We're into our second season and we brought in this new character, this new segment called Blag and Bryce. So the point of the segment was basically he just tried to blag his way into places. So Bryce is there, like, you know, he's supposed to look like a pilot. He's got this scruffy, stubbly beard, like this, back when he had hair, he had this matted hair. The wings on the pilot hat kept falling off, so he had to keep like taping them back on. Like there was no way, there's no way anyone was gonna believe that he was a pilot, like legitimately. And he walks up to the ticket gate, spends two minutes talking to this lady, just utter nonsense dribble, and then walks out. And I'm like, oh, okay, clearly it didn't work. We never expected it to work. So as we're driving away, I'm like, oh yeah, this sounds like it's another mildly amusing two minutes of television we've got. And then when it first went pear-shaped, it was the next day, this headline, police search for mystery pilot. So this is the Sunday night. We called the police like six times. It's just a prank. It was just a prank. It was us. Next morning, front page of the Herald, big photo of Bryce. Bryce is ringing, go, I thought you, called, you the called the police. Like, Mate, we've called the police six times. And so he's freaking out. John Key's on the news talking about us, calling us clowns. I think it's irresponsible from a bunch of clowns who should know better. There's photos of Bryce on the front page of the Herald. He's ever in the media. Not a single person in New Zealand realises it's Bryce Casey. Either that speaks to the quality of the security camera footage at the Auckland Airport, or that speaks to how little Bryce was known. Sharon, his younger, more successful wife, also remembers the media backlash. The next morning, it's the front page of the Herald. He is freaking out. And then some of the greatest uh, TV work I've ever done, the news cameras were trying to find Bryce at work and they came up an elevator and I, I batted it back and said, you can't film here, you can't film here. I remember someone from like the Pilots Association was like, send them to jail on that first day. I think they called us the Manukau 3. There was like all these people, free the Manukau 3. I realized it was quite a big deal when I was sitting, after I'd been interviewed by the police, and I was sitting there on my phone and I Google it and I find an article on Fox News and I find an article on Sydney Morning Herald and on Taiwan News. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is like international news now. That's not a good thing. I don't think it really ever dawned on me like maximum sentence, ten thousand dollar fine or a year in jail. I don't think it ever dawned on me that there was a possibility, even though people were calling for that. Bryce had laid a turd on his family's reputation with the stunt. But it turns out that wasn't the only bowel movement that day. So Ben and I go to the Manukau police station. So then the police call Bryce as well. And then there's three of us there. We were in this holding cell for like two hours. And the only thing I remember of it was just, we sat there silently for a couple of minutes. And then Bryce just looks over at this horrible metal toilet in the corner. And he goes, what's everyone's feelings on uh, shitting in here? <laughs> No, mate. You're not taking a shit in here. The aftermath uh, wasn't overly fun, to be honest, as I sat next to one of his fellow criminals' wives, who was heavily pregnant at the time. Uh, watching them getting punished, I get a phone call from Bryce that we were potentially going to lose our new house that we had just bought and our deposit because he couldn't get any... Um, insurance or something because he was a criminal but to be honest the most traumatic thing for Bryce is that um people think it was Ben Boyce and not him it really really racks him up when people people think it's not him I'm a wannabe that's a wannabe with an N because my name is Ben what not many people actually knew was that that same day Australia were playing Ireland at Eden Park in the Rugby World Cup and we went to Eden Park and dressed Bryce up in this big lovely Kiwi costume and made a shirt as if he was like the mascot of the Rugby World Cup and so he went and managed to talk his way into Eden Park on the same day. So the police got wind of that and so Bryce got banned from Eden Park and from the airport for a while. Well, well, well. What a day for Bryce. Well, how did his family feel about Bryce Casey becoming worldwide news for the stunt? Well, we spoke with loyal Labour supporter. I've never been a bloody Labour supporter. And impressionist. Yeah, yeah. Bryce's dad, Tony Casey. Right, Bryce, 10 years ago when we saw you on the news, how did mum and I feel? Shit. You were in the shit and we felt shit. But 10 years on, we look back and look at all the great work that you and the team are doing for charities around the country. Keep up the good work.
but don't get in the shit again. His boss at the time and current boss of The Rock, Brad King, maybe isn't quite as forgiving. I was fucked off, to be brutally honest. I was like, mate, Brad, you've only been here for a short period of time and you've pretty much taken the station into disrepute. Um, so I had to phone our lawyers to find out what we, what we would do. They were a little bit more uh, relaxed than I was. I wanted to pretty much let him go at that, that point of time. Um, I mean, that was a big deal that, uh, you know, there was terrorist stuff going on overseas and then supposedly one of our big announcers and here he is uh, impersonating a pilot all over the um, you know the, the front pages of everything. Three people making TV3 program Wannabin have been arrested and charged over a stunt that involved one of them dressing as a pilot and trying to enter a restricted area at Auckland Airport. I had countless conversations with our lawyers. They gave him a reprieve I think maybe because you know he was with Sharon they didn't want to piss Sharon off is probably the only reason why he stayed. Yeah it was, it was quite a big deal. I still think he thinks it's a little bit of a, uh, a piss take and you know he sort of beating his chest game, this was cool, but at the time it, it wasn't cool at all. One man who usually is all about getting on TV is his co-host, Rog. What did he think of it all? At the time, Leah Parnipa was our newsreader, so she's leading the news with Bryce being the guy at the airport, security breach. It was leading the news on TV. I remember looking up at six and the, Bryce's picture was on the news. And, and it's in the Herald. <laughs> I think when he was getting, getting fingerprinted, at, uh, at the police station. The first thing one of the cops said to him was, oh, what's Rog like? <laughs> is, he, is he a good guy? <laughs> Which I felt, I thought that was great. And what did happen to Bryce's TV career after the stunt? What started off being something that we thought was a mildly amusing skit for a TV show has obviously escalated into some sort of police hunt. Well, he wanted to be a TV star at that stage. I mean, obviously it was on Wannabe and uh, Bryce is doing everything imaginable to try and crowbar his way into every TV segment that uh, Ben did on Wannabe. Media Works, which runs the Wannabe series, says despite the charges, it will still run the program as scheduled this week. However, it's unknown if the skit in question will make it on television. In terms of the actual, like, what was filmed as a television segment, it was like bottom of the barrel. Like, am I be using it best? I'm not sure if we ever used Bryce again for anything after that. We'd filmed at the airport many times before that, and the only time we ever got arrested was when Bryce was there. Yes, there seemed to be no winners in all of this. The footage was never allowed to be aired. Bryce and the Crims were given community service as a result, and Casey lost his regular tally gig. But, there was worse to come. The icing on the cake for me and not for Bryce was that he'd had all these Rugby World Cup gigs lined up like that paid quite well at pubs. So all he had to do, Steinlager promotion, all he had to do, turn up, drink a heap of Steiny, hang out with Exor Blacks and like do a little bit of MC work. Steinlager didn't want any association with him and Sky City, so I got the gigs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like well-paying gigs when I had to do yeah. f all and drink <laughs> Steinies. Thanks, Bryce. <laughs> well, there it is, New Zealand, the true crime story of one man, one shitty pilot costume, and one piece of television no one will ever see. Next week, we hear from the spa cleaning man who had to clean out Farrelly's filter full of Roger's pubes. That's next week on 60 Minutes. The Rock, taking the piss since 91.